Imagine a world where you knew everything that other men don't. I'm going to tell you some hard truths that will allow you to skip decades of not knowing what you should be doing as a man. I wish I knew these when I was younger. Number one, your face changes shape until you're 90 years old. So that means you need to be correcting your tongue posture and you need to start mewing and you should never get braces. I know loads about this. I had braces. I had the whole thing completely destroy my face. I got obstructive sleep apnea from it. And I know for a fact that braces are what is known as recessive. They're a recessive appliance. And what does that mean? So this is basically your upper jaw, also known as the maxilla. Then you've got the lower jaw, the mandible. The mandible follows whatever position and shape that the maxilla is in. So the maxilla is literally able to change the shape of the bone and it's always doing it whether you like it or not. And this is determined by your tongue posture and this is determined by what you eat. Are the foods you eat soft or hard? Are they easy to chew? Which means basically are they processed foods like bread, right? Are they McDonald's and chips and all this fried bullshit where it's crispy, but it's not actually hard for you to chew? Or is it things like tough meats or vegetables? And are the vegetables really cooked? Are they boiled? Are they really soft or are they raw or are they less cooked? Normally the tongue keeps the teeth in line, but then we use braces to correct them by literally pulling the teeth. And what that does is it causes shortening of the roots of the teeth. So that means your teeth get weaker overall. They're more likely to fall out. It also causes bone to die in the maxilla when you wear braces because the teeth are literally being pulled through the maxilla right through this bone so what happens is the bone dies and it's not being allowed to regenerate and at the same time braces literally just cause your maxilla to be pushed backwards and down so it changes shape and that shape does not look attractive and it is not healthy either it reduces the nasal volume that you have which means how much you can breathe i researched this for thousands of hours because i had this problem created by braces and then i fixed it using mewing if you want to learn more information about it you can look up orthotropics on youtube this guy called dr mike mew he obviously is the guy who created the term mewing. Number two, 99% of men will never succeed. The only way you will succeed is if you have burning desire. What does that mean? That means you have to be someone who has so much desire that you will, no matter what, take actions that are necessary for you to get from A to B, which is your final goal, by splitting it up into daily actions. And you will take those daily actions every day. That's the only way you're going to succeed. If you have some illusion that you can sit there and continue doing what you've been doing for the past year, it's not going to work. You're never going to succeed. The only people who are going to succeed are the ones who get off their asses, the men who get off their asses and actually go and do the work. If you don't have a good enough reason to do it, that's your fault. That means you don't want it enough. Okay. The only person responsible for whether you succeed or not is you. Never do something just because somebody else told you to do it. And that includes if it's something you don't want to do and someone else is pressuring you or forcing you to do it. This applies to different things such as experimental scientific medications, right? Which haven't really been tested in labs properly and then are given to the whole population and you might lose your job if you don't do it. Your family is gonna disrespect you if you don't get it and all these things, right? But I can tell you as someone who has had a heart injury from a certain um, injection, right? That it's not worth it. Okay. And your self-integrity is more important than anything. And especially if you're a man, you're going to feel a lot of regret if you let someone else tell you what to do. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to people, but you should always think and realize that at the end of the day, you have something called a gut feeling. And that gut feeling is often right. And at the end of the day, you can't just do something just because someone else is trying to convince you to do it. There has to be good, full reason to do that thing. And it has to be better than not doing it or doing something else. This leads on to point number four, never do something because you were afraid that other people will judge you for it. Because the reality is people will judge you whether you do that thing or whether you don't do that thing. So you may as well do exactly what it is that you want to do and what you feel is right as a man. And as I said before, I can tell you for a fact that not doing what you thought was right will lead to regret. It will lead to insane regret that will far outweigh any prospect of anyone judging you. So it's not worth it. Number five, there's no secret move that you need to make before you can kiss a girl. 
That's it. There's no special move. There's no special words that you have to say that you don't need to touch her here and do this or say this or anything like that. And you don't have to be in a special place. You don't have to do anything, okay? There's only one thing that you have to do and that's to have the balls to kiss her. And it's gonna be hard, right? If you're not used to it, but you do it and then you do it again and then you do it again, and then you do it again. Each time you go on a new date with a girl, you do it again. And you should be kissing on the first date. You should always try to kiss on the first date. You're gonna get some girls who are like really traditional in certain countries, like maybe Mexico or something, where the girl is not gonna kiss on the first date. If you're from like the UK or something, you have literally no excuse because every girl who is willing to kiss you, who is actually interested in you, will kiss you on the first date. And you shouldn't wait till the end of the day either. So you really have no excuse, even if the girl is not going to kiss you, if, if she's more traditional, you should still be trying to kiss her because that makes her more attracted to you even if she rejects you. There's no losing outcome. Number six, never trying is failure because the only way that you're gonna reach success is if you take the stepping stones to success which are failure itself. And in fact, that's only the really enjoyable part about succeeding. That's the only really enjoyable part. That's the journey, the lessons you learn. And you're not gonna learn those lessons if you don't take the actions and take risks. All of the successful people in the world failed and they failed many times, but they didn't let that stop them. That is why they succeeded because it's not about avoiding failure. It's about persistence until you succeed. A woman with Western values is not fit to be your wife. Why do I say this? Women who are from the UK, Australia, Canada, the US and certain parts of Europe tend to have behaviors that do not lead to a loyal wife. And if you eventually want a family, you don't want your children to have their childhood ruined by the fact that you had to divorce your wife or it's some kind of abusive or bad relationship just because you married a girl who is, even if she's not a feminist, this means she's been brought up with Western values and this means she can have sex with as many guys as she wants and it's actually a good thing and she can disrespect you and try to control you and that's a good thing. And she's gonna be more masculine than if you got a more traditional girlfriend. One who actually respects you strongly and listens to what you say and lets you lead. And her being more masculine is actually going to make you more feminine. If you had a very feminine girlfriend, then you will become extremely masculine. She will accompany you. She will be the polar opposite to your masculinity and she will allow your masculinity to grow and flourish. She will need it to grow because if you don't become masculine, she's going to leave you. Also, Western women are literally going to cheat on you. You know, they're going to cheat on you, right? If you have a girl and she's been with 10 guys already, do you really think that she's going to stay with you and she's not going to be sleeping with other men? This is not the way you want to live. You don't want to live in fear and you don't want to live knowing that you have not created the best future for yourself. Why would I go for a girl who has been with 10 guys and she's from the UK and she doesn't respect me and she doesn't let me be the most masculine man that I can? Why would I be with her when I can literally go somewhere else or even find in the UK now, you have loads of international people coming to especially London, right? Why would I go for that girl when I can go for a girl who is extremely feminine and is not gonna cheat on me? And maybe she's a virgin. She's never been with a girl, right? Why would I go for that girl when I can go for that? They can both have good personalities. They can both be, you know, kind of nice people. But at the end of the day, which one is gonna be better? Look, there's tons of girls out there. There's really no need to have this mindset of, Oh, but she's the one because she's not the one. There's many ones and you can find pretty much unlimited ones. We're a planet of many, many people now. So you, there's really no reason to uh, isolate yourself to these kinds of women. Number eight, nature cures anxiety and stress. It is the cure. Why do I say that? I'm gonna be honest with you. When I was 18, I had severe anxiety. And the main reason for this was the fact that I had an abusive father. But what happened was basically my brother took me to this valley, uh, which is basically, I don't know if you know what a valley is, but it's basically like there's two kind of mountainous areas and then they converge into a dip, right? That's a valley and it's really green and lush and beautiful. Basically, my brother took me to this valley. I didn't really know what to expect. I'd never seen one before. I'd never been to like a national park in my life. I was just stuck inside playing video games and occasionally I'd go to like these tiny parks to play football when I was really young. I basically had this, all of this bullying in school and then I had my father abusing me in final years before I left to university. And then my brother took me to this valley 
and we got just into the opening of the valley and then I felt this weight lifted. Like I had this constant anxiety that was with me all of the time and I never felt settled. I never felt clear in my mind. I never felt calm and rest. But after I went into this valley, it all changed. I understood what had to change. Everything clicked. I understood that everything in my life was wrong. That was the beginning of changing everything. That was how I changed everything. So anything natural, meaning anything that our ancestors used to do, cures anxiety and stress. And that includes things like fighting because fighting spikes your cortisol, it makes your muscles do a lot of work and it gives you adrenaline, right? But what it does is afterwards, it causes this kind of cascade effect where you end up being really relaxed afterwards and you feel really content and relaxed and fulfilled because you're a man. You did a man's fundamental job built in him through generations, through so many years of evolution, man has been built to protect, right? And you have just fulfilled that job, so well done. That's why you need to fight as well. Now, don't get it twisted. These things which are not actually natural, the things which our ancestors did not used to do, they are not healthy. So that means things like watching pornography. I'll give you a little story. When I used to watch pornography all the time, I felt like it gave me this relief of anxiety because it did. But guess where the anxiety was coming from? It was coming from the pornography in the first place. So just because you eat some cake and you feel better, or you're watching Netflix and you're watching this little TV show every night and it makes you feel better, it's not a good use of your time. You know deep down that it's not, you know the truth. Did our ancestors sit there on the couch watching TV all the time? Do you know the only reason I've been sitting on the sofa, the only times I've been sitting on the sofa is to record videos. I don't sit on the sofa otherwise. When I stopped eating cake and so much sugar, the anxiety disappeared. When I started exercising and doing calisthenics, the anxiety disappeared. When I left my abusive father, the anxiety disappeared. Lesson number nine, never try to be friends with a girl you are physically attracted to because you can't be friends. You can't be friends if you actually liked her before or whatever, or you were like, oh, but we can actually be friends. You can't, okay? That's called the friend zone. And you need to learn to get out of that. And actually the best way to do that is to completely forget about having female friends in general. Because when you are not competent with women, you don't deserve to have female friends. It is better for you to show your interest to this girl and get rejected. That is always better. If you want to learn how to get a hot girlfriend, this is truly the only method that you need. And it's the only method that works. Stay healthy.